This is Mrs. Alexander, and this PowerPoint is processing a crime scene in the Project Lead the Way Biomed classroom. In this PowerPoint, you're going to learn some important information about what crime scene investigators' jobs are and what they do, and it'll relate to the case of Anna Garcia that you've already looked at or you're going to look at in class. When most students think about a crime scene investigator, they think about those shows that are on, like CSI, and they get to watch all the glorious job and work that CSIs do. Something contrary to popular belief is most CSIs are not deputized where they can't actually carry a gun and they don't go and shoot the bad guys. Their job is to collect evidence, take really good detailed notes, photographs, sketch the scene, interview any witnesses that are at the scene, and make sure that they use all of their senses. Crimes investigators do not actually go in and clear the scene and check to see if the bad guy is still there. And it's very important not to make assumptions about the case, such as if you see five unknown white pills, don't write in your notes that you found drugs at the scene. Even though they, you mean over-the-counter drugs, you still don't know what the substance is until you take it back to the lab and test it. So don't make assumptions, just document. In Anna's case, the method that we used to search the crime scene was the zone method because we had an easily defined zone such as a front foyer or it could be a bedroom or a kitchen. And when you're searching a place like that, you break the area up into different zones as seen in the picture, like in a bedroom, zone one, two, three, or four, or in general, you could call that a zone. You're gonna learn about some more crime scene search methods, but I wanted to point out that in Anna's case, we use the zone method. When you're ready to basic do your sketch, then you will go ahead and take your sheet out to the crime scene, and you will start by looking at the scale of the scene and figure out how many floor tiles are equivalent to how many squares on your sheet of paper. And as you look at your sketch, you can see what the scale is. Also, you will have a legend. A legend is important because it tells important criteria or characteristics of the scene. And your key is up to you how and what you number in your key. Most evidence markers are labeled and explained what they are. I'm not worried about your artistic ability for your sketch. I'm worried about if you actually have the different pieces of evidence laid out to scale and ratio between how far apart each thing is. We learned a little bit of it about Anna Garcia's case, and that information is provided here in paragraph format. And I wanted to point out the pieces in blue are parts that you would put in your legend. So the legend, again, is important criteria or characteristics about the case what time you arrived as a CSI, how the body was laying when you found it, things like the temperature or other people that were found at the scene. Those are important criteria. So for our case, we have the date and how hot it was inside and outside. We have what the victim was wearing and how she was facing when you arrived. We also would write down that we broke the door down. That's important to know because if another investigator came later, they might think that a possible witness or um, suspect would have broken down the door, maybe trying to get in, whereas we're the ones that actually broke down the door with the EMT because Anna did not respond when we knocked. And that she was dead when we arrived. That's important because some cases they actually take the victim and they're still alive, but in our case, Anna was lying face down and dead upon arrival. Please add the important information to your legend. Again, a scale has to do with the ratios and the measurements of the actual area. So a, a great crime scene investigator would actually measure feet, inches, centimeters from each piece of evidence and they would write those different scales on their sketch. For your sketch you have that one box on yours equals six um, inches. And so if you look down at the floor in the school we're at we have tiles and each tile is approximately one square foot. That means two of your boxes on your piece of paper left to right would equal 12 inches and two up and down would equal 12 inches which would give you one square foot. So a great thing to do is to take your pencil and make these lines a little bit bolder on your sketch in pencil so you can erase it later and that will help you look at what floor tiles each piece of evidence is lying in. When you go out to the scene, you want to pay attention to the evidence tints and what they're actually pointing to. We went over this in class briefly what each piece of evidence was and so make sure you update your key as well. Number one was vomit. Two were the blood drops between the head and the corner of the table. Number three was the blood on the actual table. Four was an empty syringe. Five were the five white unknown pills. Important to note that they were pills and not crushed or powdered. Six, there was a cup of spilled liquid 
and there was a fingerprint on the cup. Not the actual spilled liquid, but the fingerprint is what number six is. Hair on the lamp was number seven, and then the muddy shoe print was number eight. And here's what the sketch looks like that you would have been given in class. Uh, make sure again that your legend and your key is com are completed and you will get your turn to go on outside.